Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless the united states of america was once defined by god country and family those values are what made us the shining city on the hill but over the past few decades those lights have been slowly fading with easter around the corner here's a good example of what america used to be take a look at the new york city skyline from the 50s skyscrapers decorated with the Holy Cross on Good Friday, a symbol of an American metropolis upholding tradition. But you won't see that in the city today. Behind those lights was a sense of purpose, community, piety. Luke 18, 6 through 8. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And that's slowly leaving this town. And not just leaving New York, America is losing sight of the defining values that made us great. A recent Wall Street Journal poll found that the percent of Americans who value patriotism, religion, and having children have reached historic lows. Look at that. The Bible indicates that there will be a great apostasy during the end times, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Falling away is the Greek word apostasia, which means defection from the truth, properly the state, apostasy. Apostasia, from which we get the English word apostasy, refers to a general defection from the true God, the Bible, and the Christian faith. The end times will include a rejection of God's word, a further falling away of an already fallen world. The only value that's on the rise with Americans is money. It's no surprise that we feel more depressed and anxious and alone than ever before. We're rudderless ships, starving for meaning and direction in life. If we're gonna get it together as a country, Every single one of us needs to find purpose and look in the right place. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Critics say Biden and the woke mob are taking a swipe at Christians this Easter. This year, Easter Sunday falls on Transgender Visibility Day, which is traditionally on March 31st. But this year, not only did Fairfax County, Virginia, make an official proclamation for Easter Sunday, so did President Biden. Biden was the first president ever to issue an official proclamation for Transgender Day of Visibility, and this was back in 2021. And in his proclamation this year, he said, quote, today we send a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved. You are heard. You are understood. You belong. You are America and my entire administration and I have your back. The Fairfax County Board making a similar proclamation this week. Just very happy that we're recognizing uh, a community that has too often been pushed into the shadows and celebrating uh, yet another um, community within our diverse tapestry here in Fairfax County. This day actually goes back to 2010. And when President Biden first made this proclamation back in 2021, that year Easter was on April 4th, except this year, they both happen on the same day, Lisa. But it's also a random day created by a random person out of Michigan in the same way that I could declare 
March 30th is the day of Lisa. Uh, the White House also banned religious themed designs from the White House Easter uh, egg art contest. When the whole point of Easter is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a religious holiday, a religious celebration. Uh, to celebrate the day of trans visibility in and of itself is an affront to Christianity because the Bible says that God made man and he made woman. He made male and female. To say otherwise is to deny the truth, is to deny God's creation. Also, to do it on Easter is blasphemous. You can even go back to the last Trans Day of Visibility in 2023. He celebrated after Christian individuals were murdered by a trans person at the Covenant School in Nashville. And then the White House proceeded to go on and say that it was the trans community under attack, not Christianity. I am so sorry that I believe that Joe Biden understands the optics of it, and he is doing this intentionally, and he is thumbing his nose at Christians and Easter, and he's essentially spitting in the face of Christians everywhere. The Bible says that God made man and he made woman. He made male and female. To say otherwise, is to deny the truth, is to deny God's creation. The unsaved hold the view there is no right or wrong. Therefore, whatever feels or seems right at the time and in that situation is right. Christians hold the view that there are indeed absolute realities and standards that define what is true and what is not. To the unsaved, tolerance has become the one cardinal virtue of the postmodern society, the one absolute, and therefore, intolerance is the only evil. Any dogmatic belief, especially a belief in absolute truth, is viewed as intolerance, the ultimate sin to an unbeliever. If there is absolute truth, then there are absolute standards of right and wrong, and we are accountable to those standards. This accountability is what people are really rejecting when they reject absolute truth. The denial of absolute truth and the cultural relativism that comes with it are the logical result of a society that has embraced the theory of evolution as the explanation for life. If evolution is true, then life has no meaning. We have no purpose, and there cannot be any absolute right or wrong. Man is then free to live as he pleases and is accountable to no one for his actions. Yet, no matter how much sinful men deny the existence of God and absolute truth, they still will someday stand before God in judgment. The Bible declares this in Romans 1, 19-22. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Is there any evidence for the existence of absolute truth? Yes, there is the human conscience, that certain something within us that tells us the world should be a certain way, that some things are right and some things are wrong. Our conscience convinces us there is something wrong with suffering, pain, and evil, and it makes us aware that love, generosity, compassion, and peace are positive things for which we should strive. The Bible describes the role of the human conscience as we read in Romans, 2, 14 through 16. For when Gentiles, who do not have the law, by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves, their thoughts accusing or else excusing them, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. God has revealed his truth to us, through his word, the Bible. Knowing absolute truth is only possible through a personal relationship with the one who claims to be the truth, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and the only path to God. The fact that absolute truth does exist points us to the truth that there is a sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth and who has revealed himself to mankind in order that we might know him personally through his son, Jesus Christ. That is the absolute truth. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, 
apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The Israeli military claims these images show the strike that killed a Hezbollah rocket unit commander in Lebanon. This is all that was left after the attack. It's the latest sign of escalation in hostilities, Israeli forces announcing they're stepping up their military strategy. We are turning from defence to attack when it comes to pursuing Hezbollah. In any place Hezbollah is operating, we will reach them. This is correct for Beirut, Baalbek, Taya, Sidon and Nabatia. And it's also true for places further afield, such as Damascus, Homs and Hama. In any place we need to operate, we will act. That campaign has already started, Israeli airstrikes killing dozens of people, mostly soldiers, near Aleppo on Friday. This amateur footage claims to show the aftermath of strikes carried out overnight, the deadliest by Israel on Syria since October 7th. Hezbollah has confirmed the death of another one of its commanders in the attack. Israel has been ramping up its strikes on proxies of Iran, which gives Hezbollah both military and financial backing. Both sides have been exchanging near daily fire since last October, this latest escalation sparking fears of a wider regional conflict. And it's also true for places further afield, such as Damascus. Are we on the verge of the biblical doom of Damascus spoken of in Isaiah 17? Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9. In that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. And in the Middle East, dozens are reported dead in Syria tonight after an apparent airstrike by Israel raising fears of a wider conflict in the region. NBC's Raf Sanchez is in Israel tonight. Raf, what more do we know? Tom, this is the largest apparent Israeli attack in Syria in years, according to a war monitoring group. They say this strike in Aleppo killed not just 36 Syrian soldiers, but also six militants from the Iranian-backed group Hezbollah. Now, Israel is not claiming responsibility for this strike. But remember, Hezbollah dominates southern Lebanon. They are aligned with Hamas, but they are larger and they are more powerful. And earlier today, Israel says it killed a senior Hezbollah commander responsible for rocket attacks on Israeli civilians. The militants are confirming his death and they are vowing revenge. And all of this is raising fears that without a ceasefire deal, this war could spread well beyond Gaza. One day soon, we will get out of bed, turn on the morning news, and the broadcast will go something like this. Israel has launched an all-out attack on Damascus, Syria. It has ceased from being a city and is a ruinous heap. The latest U.S. armed shipments to Israel, F-35 fighter jets and bombs in the pipeline as the Biden administration faces some criticism for the ongoing support. President Biden greenlighting billions of dollars worth of weapons for Israel. That's despite tension between the White House and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over a military offensive in southern Gaza. Now, the Washington Post first reporting the new arms transfer, which, according to the report, includes MK-84 2,000-pound bombs, cited a U.S. official, the report also said the State Department last week approved the transfer of 25 F-35 fighter jets and engines. Now, this is a move to fulfill long-standing weapons deals that were signed off by Congress years ago, some as far back as 2008. The United States provides $3.8 billion in military assistance every year to Israel, but cracks in the relationship they have been showing, mostly uh, after the U.S. refused to veto a U.N. Security Council resolution calling for an immediate 
immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Netanyahu then called off a visit to D.C. by a delegation that was meant to discuss Israel's ground invasion of Rafa. That meeting, it's now being rescheduled. And now news of this continued weapons supply. Democrats have been urging President Biden to put, put any conditions on sales of arms to Israel, saying the U.S. has a responsibility to withhold those weapons due to Israel's bombardment in Gaza, mass civilian casualties and restrictions on aid getting in. There's a prophecy written by Asaph the seer that many end-time teachers believe has yet to find fulfillment. In this prophecy, a confederation of Muslim nations have taken crafty counsel against the Jewish people in Israel in order to destroy them as we read in Psalm 83, 1-8. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Is it possible Psalm 83 is a future prophecy on the verge of finding fulfillment? Cyclone Gamane was expected to breeze by Madagascar. However, it changed course and made landfall on the north of the massive island. The National Disaster Management Office said its slow movement amplified its destructive force. We are in trouble and we are evacuating the water. The day before yesterday, there wasn't much water, but yesterday the flooding started. Our neighbor's house is destroyed and the water has entered our house, taking away all our possessions, including the fridges. Authorities say at least 18 people have been killed, some by drowning, others from collapsing houses or falling trees. However, four people are still missing, and as many as 20,000 people have been displaced. Several routes and bridges have become impassable. Video images show water rushing through villages and people making human chains to rescue trapped people in waist-deep water. As you can see, there is a lot of water, but we can't manage it. We have to call in reinforcements. We haven't eaten yet. All our coal stocks are flooded and the sacks of rice are being carried away by the water. We don't know what to do. As a result of the floods, people's routines have been broken. And suddenly, food security has become a problem. On top of the looming threat of waterborne diseases, always a worry in these conditions. Because of the flooding, we have nothing to eat. What's more, our children are sick because of the dirty water. We have no drinking water or coal to prepare food. We are asking for help. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. For people in Mangwe in Zimbabwe, these are desperate times. The rains have failed, crops have wilted, and many people living here face a hunger crisis caused by reduced harvests. Getting water is difficult, as many boreholes and wells in the area have dried up and those still being used don't have enough. Many of those who live in Mangwe now need food aid to survive. Our food situation is difficult. We only eat once a day because we have nothing in the fields, not a single grain. Everything has dried up in the drought. We also have problems getting water. We'd like to request that they assist us with water, or maybe they could even dig a borehole for us. The relief food program is being funded by American aid agency, USAID, and rolled out by the United Nations World Food Program. It aims to help some of the 2.7 million people in rural Zimbabwe who face severe hunger because of the drought that has affected many parts of southern Africa. I just spoke with some of the elders from the, the community and the last time they can remember this type of drought is 1947. Yeah, so it's, this is not a normal circumstance and they say this drought now with this type of heat that they've experienced is, has not happened before. So um, we do expect and we see that also around us uh, quite an impact on the agricultural production. In Neno Malawi, hundreds of people also depend on food aid. The drought in Zimbabwe, Zambia and Malawi has reached crisis levels 
Zambia and Malawi have declared the drought national disasters. Zimbabwe could soon do the same. The prolonged dry spell has also affected Botswana and Angola, as well as Mozambique and Madagascar. A year ago, many parts of this region were drenched by deadly tropical storms and floods. People here have seen the devastating impact of climate change, from having too much rain to then struggling to cope with challenges brought about by too little rain. We had rains on 27th December and we started planting on the 28th to the 29th. The maize germinated normally. It was in January when the rain stopped and it was all dry thereafter. All my maize dried. I did not harvest anything, not even a single bag. There is hunger in my household. This bag I have received from government today, I will eat with my children. For many families in Southern Africa, this drought has made the difficulties they face due to the hard economic times even worse. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the Tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat, as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. Californians once again soaked, facing yet another round of punishing rain and snow after an already relentlessly wet season. It won't stop, and I thought it wasn't gonna rain for Easter Sunday, so it's pretty bad. Overnight, 21 million people under flood alerts across Southern California. In the San Bernardino Mountains outside Los Angeles, dozens of drivers unexpectedly trapped in the snow. You're gonna have to take this extra foot chains on, all right? Near Tahoe, residents bracing for up to two and a half feet of snowfall and hazardous travel conditions. We saw some chain control signs, but we weren't expecting this. Excitement for a weekend of outdoor Easter egg hunts dampened by the soggy weather had to cut some activities, but we're still trying to offer as much as we can to the community. In just the last three months, Californians have endured catastrophic mudslides, flooding, and dramatic rescues from rushing rivers. So close. Behind it all, rising concerns that California may be entering a new era of extreme weather. This warming climate has a capability of holding more moisture in the air. When you do get that energy moving towards the West Coast, it's able to pull more moisture and heavier precipitation into the region. Golden State residents hoping this is the last in a seemingly endless string of gray weekends. Tarkan Batarabatsuk has lived as a nomadic herder for his entire life, but this past winter has been one of the harshest he's ever experienced. On November the 4th, a storm began and snow started falling from day until nightfall. This continued non-stop for two days. The snowfall was immense, up to one meter high. This was the beginning of what Mongolians call the Jud, a disastrous cold spell which coated most of the country in thick layers of snow and ice. In rural areas, temperatures plunged to as low as minus 50 degrees. An estimated 5 million grazing animals died from the extreme cold and being unable to feed. Tens of thousands of families have been affected. Some have lost 70% of their livestock. Snow-covered roads have also prevented many from accessing food and medical facilities. The Mongolian Red Cross says climate change has led to winter conditions lasting as long as six months, making things very difficult for a quarter of its 3.3 million population who make a living as herders, selling meat and cashmere wool. The organization has been visiting families in need and is pleading for international support. Tarkan Batar lost 200 of his 700 animals this winter, but he considers himself lucky. He knows herders who lost many more. Still, he worries about the health of his remaining animals, fearing he may not have enough newborns this coming year. 
Mashunt. This winter was very difficult for us. People couldn't leave their homes. People dug snow with shovels and even with their bare hands. He says the worst of the extreme winter conditions are over, but he must soon make preparations to survive the next. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather, and yet it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen. Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front-run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21.11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The World Health Organization is warning that hunger, poverty, malnutrition and the spread of disease have reached alarming levels in the Democratic Republic of Congo. WHO says violence has made the situation worse, with close to 10 million people displaced in the restive east due to a prolonged conflict which has escalated in recent months. A quarter of the country's population, around 25 million people, are facing hunger, with two in five children severely malnourished. There are also tens of thousands of cases of gender-based violence. But it is not just conflict. Climate shocks, including flash floods, have displaced millions more. These conditions enable the spread of deadly diseases and have placed an extra burden on the country's already fragile health system. WHO says the situation in the DRC is now the second largest displacement crisis globally after Sudan. The humanitarian group Save the Children says at least 54 people in Somalia have died of cholera in recent months and nine of those deaths occurred within the past week. This marks the highest weekly death toll this year. Save the Children uh, says more than half of the nearly 4,400 confirmed cases are children under five. The outbreak which began this January was made worse by the severe flooding that occurred last October and November. Save the Children is urgently calling for action from local government and health agencies to combat the rapid spread of the disease, which has seen a surge in cases in the capital Mogadishu and in the country's southern region. Cases are rising in the Americas. The cases in the last three months are more than the total cases in the last year alone. And experts see a potentially worsening situation for a dengue outbreak so far in the region. Most of the current cases are in the southern hemisphere. Almost 80 percent of the cases are reported in countries like Brazil, Argentina and Paraguay. Over 1,000 deaths have also been reported. It's especially concerning as cases are rising off-season. Usually, dengue spikes during the wet season, 
which is still months away. And as per officials, some areas are reporting dengue for the first time. The virus is spread to people when they are bitten by infected mosquitoes. Factors such as rising temperatures, rapid urbanization, drought and flood, poor sanitation, and a lack of robust health systems in some countries are responsible for a surge in cases. Symptoms include fever, headache, vomiting, skin rashes, as well as muscle and joint pain. Severe cases can also turn out to be fatal. There is no specific treatment for the disease, and prevention from mosquito bite is re recommended. The CDC is issuing a new warning about a nationwide spike in MPOX cases. New data shows the number of reported infections is almost double what they were at this time last year. MPOX, what used to be called monkeypox, that's a disease uh, that is rarely fatal. Its symptoms are similar to smallpox, but milder. In the shimmering blue waters of the Florida Keys, long the jewel of Florida's southern coast, a mystery lurks beneath the surface. Fish with the spins, flipping and spinning without stop. In my lifetime of dives, I've never seen any behavior like this from fish at all. Diver Greg Furstenworth first observed it last year and soon learned the fish, including these small tooth sawfish, which can grow up to 16 feet, were dying. Scientists are struggling to understand why. It's unprecedented. They do not spin like this. They do not behave like this. This is not normal behavior at all. That highly unusual behavior has been seen in more than 40 species, according to Florida Fish and Wildlife. Necropsies on dead fish have revealed no sign of a pathogen or bacterial infection. State officials say oxygen levels, water salinity, pH, and temperature are not believed to be the cause, bewildering researchers. It's a mystery. There's so many different possibilities that it's really difficult to isolate which one it could be. 28 sawfish have been found dead, but the actual number believed to be even higher, a blow to this critically endangered species that was early in its road to recovery. So to see these animals dying could be a major setback. We want to get to the bottom of it and figure out uh, a way a way to, to come back from this. Fisheries in the Florida Keys remain open, though state officials say swimming where dead fish are observed isn't recommended. Hosea 4, 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love, and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in it languish. And also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. God is judging the world in these last days the same way he judged Israel in Hosea 4.3. The prophet Hosea tells us the reasons God judged Israel. No faithfulness or steadfast love. No knowledge of God in the land. Swearing, bearing false witness. Lying, murder, stealing, and adultery. Sounds a lot like America, doesn't it? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance 
results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.